All right, <clears throat> Monday, March 2nd. Getting close to noon. So, cleaned up the front end a little bit. Got it all up on jacks, okay. Went inside, went through all the switches and controls and everything and turn, lined everything up to off, except for the main key switch, which is the main relay and um, gear up handle and everything else off. Uh, before I did that, I've gone through this thing multiple times, at least two, three times, to where no voltages are touching. So these would be like generator, starter. So generator, the only one would probably really be hot when the master comes on, but they all, but I have those generator switches off. So theoretically, no starter power, no generator power. All that should have been isolated to a degree. And everything else is um, inside uh, self, self powering. I kind of drew a blank there for a second, sorry. Um, exhaust gas temperature, sending unit, cylinder head temperature. These things all have their own bi bimetallic spring or metals, whatever, however it does, and generates its own current to the gauges so it just doesn't need power to run those <clears throat> then i got in here opened her up and uh just held with rubber gloves on i just held um the hot lead to the battery to where we got the gear just starting to come up so if you look back at it she looks like she's flying. It should be a little early on a gear up, <laughs> wheels off, but I've seen guys do it. They get that far off the ground and they're already gear up. I think it's a, <laughs> gear's there for a reason. And, uh, just in case you need it. Um, but yeah, once well established, it's an angle, positive rate of climb, up she goes. No more runway. And you know, I you know I'm a greenhorn when it comes to running multi-engine airplanes and anything like this. I have really no time. I think I think I have really zero time in my logbook for a twin engine. I've got Navy fighter single engine fighter time, <laughs> which is is a whole lot of fun. But I I really don't have any twin time. So that was, this is the main purpose of investing in the Crockett leasing, which is this aircraft, basically. Um, working to get some multi-engine time. But <laughs> what I was hoping to get into and have a little bit of investment into is turning out to take all my resources, cash-wise, or in re just actually more in cash, because I got to do all, the la all this other stuff, too, that's my labor. So I'm cleaning what I just got done doing. I'm still in the process of cleaning is uh, a little gasoline, you know, av gas. Don't use regular gasoline. That'll give you a headache. Av gas is a clean fuel. It's not full of additives and all this carcinogenic crap that's in the fuels today. Just if you're going to use anything, if you're not going to use solvent or brake cleaners or things of this nature, um, use a... Uh, uh, you know, old timers use, just use Avgas. Actually, back in the day, it was it used 80 octane. Works great for cleaning parts. But there's only only 100 little leads available. And it works fine. It's just a little more expensive. So I go over here to the tank, go into the tit, and fill up the, fill up the cup. So I've, I've probably sucked a couple gallons out of this thing so far. Dripped her into the bucket and been washing parts and greasy stuff and all over the floor and you name it but it needs it so i'm getting her all scrubbed up cleaned up and so i can inspect everything real close then grease it and uh go from there so just let you know where we're at 
So the land, main landing gear, the doors come down. You have to be very careful. So you guys that new in Beechcraft, uh, whether Bonanza or any, pretty much any any Beechcraft aircraft, general aviation size, you know, none of that King Air, or Queen Air, you know, that stuff. Just GA, lower GA Beechcraft. The way their doors open up and come within here to your jack you have to be very careful and the footprint placement because it comes and touches it's it it's loose but it it's right there and that's critical because if you don't get that right and you drop the gate that far i mean that's really landing gear really hasn't even started coming up too much and that gate that door is all the way wide open so you really have to measure out eyeball it you can get your angles this way and your angle this way. And it's just, you got to get it in there just right. And some have different widths and lengths around, you know, they'll have them spread out more for a Bonanza. This is kind of equal distance. It's more of an angled change. You rotate it around and it kind of does one of those. You figure it to where you get it where you want it. <clears throat> Landing, front landing gear looking better got it cleaned up i need to clean up and now i got to get up in all this i wanted to take the tension off so i could get all the grease and grime out of it and it i'm telling you i've already swept this floor up and cleaned up it, it, all kinds of nastiness and i have yet to touch the mains uh the mains a few hours of flight time ago which is a year or so a year and a half ago um uh al Connie got a hold of Al to change uh, this strut was collapsed like it is now and Al changed it with him but Mason over here next door he's he was he's where the guy that had worked for Al for years or a year or so got his AMP and he's got a job at the, at the state university at AMP it's pretty cool so Actually, Mason's the one that actually did most of the work, is what he said. And I believe it. Um, uh, one thing I found, so this strut has collapsed on me. And Al said it's new, so he's, it will put, he's got a strut machine to help pump this up. But um, I can take the little floor jack. That's a small, I mean, you get the Walmart strut tough and special cheapest little floor jack and it'll fit underneath because what happens when this gear is down if this is what happens when it's down is it the hole is hitting it you can't stick your jack in the hole here which is goes it goes in here and then it comes out as a little bar and your little bottle jack and you lift it up and uh, and it, what happens is you can't get it won't this thing will collapse to where it's up to here and you can't get that your tool in there so the only way I found to be able to jack it up with it all the way down is the floor jack this tiny floor I used tried the bigger one it won't work because you can't get underneath and get a purchase you need the small little jack and you get it right up under here and then raises up just fine so this struts completely collapsed if i put this floor jack underneath and raise it up it go all it would go to its bottoms out so i'm not sure but when but what i was going to get at is when i raise this up what's interesting when they come in for an annual and or whatever inspection gear inspection the once you raise it up on the jacks you're to get the wheel off the ground you got to be full extension well this is actually right now is the first time i really got my hands on inspect and check calibrate you know all that good stuff put the calibrated eye on it and um it's fine it's tight everything 
everything in here is tight everything there's no no real other i mean that's just spring action but um there's no wobble that delay what you see in a wobble because that's really off the spring so but there's no wobble in this at all but if i take this and i and i just realized it when i got it got it off uh, the first time before i started to swing it with it fully extended there's it's tight everything feels good all the bushings feel good but if i get up if i jack since it collapses and i jack it up halfway i could jack it all the way up right but if i jack it anywhere from halfway to all the way up this all of these bushings are shot i mean it's just wobble 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 i mean it mean it almost to the point that it it would do at least that much you know that that much wobble and that's supposed to be straight up and down and, and purchased straight so but you don't know it what i'm getting at is when you come in for your inspection and you put her up on the stand and you let her drop to let her all drop until you can raise her off the deck is not the same checking for wear conditions and problems is not the same as having it brought up halfway where it normally rests when the weight's on it and where it statically is balanced out all it, that because i because there's no tension on that because it's it's collapsed i mean it's i can actually lift the tire up into the i mean i could pick and shove it up my hand in there so i could pick it up my hand and get in there and then it's wobbly is all get out but if the strut's good you can't do that really because once you put the pressure up to get it collapsed to that space it's under pressure and you're not going to be able to really move anything because it's tent, it's tight but if the strut is the way the bet i guess what i'm saying if you truly want to check your landing gear is that you gotta drink you gotta bleed your strut out let all the, the air out of the strut and almost undo the you know, wait till it's and undo the schrader valve and let it open to the atmosphere so there's nothing no pressure and then you can raise and lower the cylinder and check these different angles because as this thing collapses the angles change everything all the geometry changes as this thing goes up and down and this thing does not hang out in this fold full down position that's not where it's normally at it's usually at least halfway and you sit long enough they start to collapse on you and they'll get down where you got just a little bit but all, all and then you take off and run with it right they take off and land it that way and all, that's where all the gears got wore. The, war, the gears, all, all the bushings and everything is worn where this stuff is strut is least at a minimum halfway up. So you got to really check it there with no pressure on the tension of the strut and get it to the halfway geometry point and then start checking all the parts. I, I'm, I'm not kidding. It was, it's that big of a difference because once it's all the way full down, it's in a, it's in a place it hasn't seen since it was new. <clears throat> well the combat action that's seen has been at the halfway point halfway to, to bottom you got to get down there with no tension or no pressure or no so you, you, you can find the slack anyway enough rambling about that and so long story short this strut needs to come apart at, at all the bush for all the bushings and all the all the bronze brass bushings need to get changed out which isn't a big deal. There's small, drive out the old one, drive in a new one, check bolt size, don't fit, ream it a little bit, get your clearance. It's no big deal, it's just time consuming. And when you're paying a shop guy 75 to 125 an hour to, to do this, this is a lot of work. It's taken me a couple hours just to clean the thing on the front, I haven't got the sides. It's all nasty up underneath here. I mean, nasty. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it. Well, it's looking a little better. I uh, got up there with a rag. And I uh, found out that that's bent. See how that's, that uh, dampener, the shimmy dampener? Looks like it's got an elbow or a wow in it, and it does. Once I got all the dirt and grease and everything off of it, I was, you know, I'm able to look at things. I, so all the grease fittings, dirty, nasty, had to be all clean. So I got all those fittings up there and clean and go through the wiring, go to the fuel pump. So there's the fuel pumps for the heater 
that's the heater. Rust, corrosion, right? Gotta chase all this stuff down. This is all deferred maintenance under part 91. Sorry, I'm gonna get dizzy. So a lot of deferred maintenance on this aircraft. But the the piece that makes it work for me is that for the most part, except this last year, um it has it's seen at least a four thousand plus dollar annual every year. And um I went through all the invoices. I didn't go through the logbooks per se. I did, but I mean there wasn't the logbooks I was, I was looking at all the invoices and the work that's done. Cause I could tell Connie really isn't the wrench turner. He's he's a cleans hands attorney dog guy. <laughs> nice guy. I like Connie a lot. Yeah, he just he's he's a care he's he reminds me he he is what I believe and think of a good old boy down here in Arkansas. Connie. He's a good guy. He's having back surgery right now. So he's in the loop de loop world until that <clears throat> until he heals up. Talked to him just before he went for surgery. Alright. So it's just main part of this job is cleaning, 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 cleaning. And then you find your one little thing that's out of whack, broken or rusted or corroded or something. Every little station, every fray of edge has something wrong with it. Not major. Not, and I don't mean that in, a, in, a, in an unworthy statement. It's airworthy. That's all. That's good. This is all an airworthy airplane. Just then you get the engine back. But it's the deferred maintenance, the little stuff. And I don't have any problem doing that. I enjoy it. So I, so my job that I look at for my daily, my nine to fiver, is just working on little things. I've got all new door seals, baggage compartments. I've got all, I've, you know, there's endless amount of work to be done all the all the engine cowling pieces that are back there all all that back there all has needs to be stripped inside and cleaned inside put new baffling i got all new baffling for it and that so it's twin engines so once you run out of chores on this side there's same amount of chores on this side uh, but always up for a good challenge. You guys have a great day. Bye.